I'm here today to uh, read a book. This was a uh, author, like the author of the book is my mother. Um, her name is Christy White, and this is her series, The Adventure of Jane Gizmo. Uh, this was written by her along with a, uh, a co-writer, um, Dr. James Brown. These books are uh, marketed towards uh, younger, specifically boys, as for a uh, Dr. James Brown, he's been uh, studying the effects on uh, reading books when it comes to like a uh, youth and children because of having the liter literary skills early on, like knowing uh, what you're reading and not necessarily what you're reading, but having that sense of ownership and being able to do independent skills uh, is something that is uh, definitely very big at, for a child. And it's something that uh, he believes should always be encouraged. Um, so they wrote this book about an indigenous boy named Jay. And so that's him right here. And this is the cat Gizmo. So these are going to be the two main characters of the book as I'm reading. And I hope you guys enjoy. So starting off the book, we have a This Book Belongs To page. So this is uh, sort of solidifying that sense of ownership. So uh, for today, I'm going to say this book belongs to all of us. So just bear with me as I, uh, as I uh, rotate the pages as I'm not very well versed in doing this online. So uh, anyways, to start. Jay was an eight-year-old indigenous boy. It was Saturday morning and Jay was eating breakfast. Dad was reading a notice that he had picked up at the Indigenous Cultural Center. He saw that a special event was going to take place at the Cultural Center next Saturday. The notice read that there was an Indigenous boy who was going to be performing the hoop dance. The performance was called Hoops for Hope. The boy traveled to many places doing his dancing as raising awareness about a condition called autism. So I'm going to take a little bit of a pause here um, and just talk about uh, who this boy is and what the story behind it is. So my name is River Christy White. I am the, uh, I'm the boy in this book that I, is the hoop dancer. So I do what's called hoop dancing, which is a uh, First Nations dance. Um, that uses what's similar to hula hoops to create messages um, uh, by putting them around your body in certain formations. Um, there, there are some really great videos that I can link to uh, afterwards so that you guys can see, but um, I run a campaign called Hoops for Hope. So the campaign, uh, as the book said, raises awareness about autism and helps get services for people who need it in communities that might not necessarily be able to afford those services themselves. So on the day of the event, Dad took Jay to the Cultural Center. When they arrived, there was a big crowd. There was a large sign outside the building. The name of the Indigenous boy that was performing was River Christie White. So as you can see, they're arriving at the event and there's the big sign that says special event today. So this is an illustration of what the hoop dance looks like. Um, so this is an artist representation of uh, the eagle um, or what some people also call the thunderbird. Dad and Jay watched the performing, or the performance, sorry. It was very exciting. Then River Christy White told them about the hoop dance. He said that there are only about 300 hoop dancers in Canada. He also told the people quite a bit about autism and how important it was for people to understand what it means to live with autism. When Jay and Gizmo got home, they decided that they were going to learn how to hoop dance. Together, they went through Dr Jay's dress up box and found clothes they could wear that would make them look like River Christy White. Dad helped Jay and Gizmo by taking them to the store on the reserve to buy some of the things they needed. They got hula hoops from the dollar store, and when they were all dressed up, Jay and Gizmo did look like little hoop dancers, and similar to the ones that they had seen. Gizmo even had a bandana on his head. As you can see, little Gizmo down here with the bandana, 
and then uh, Jay is all dressed up in uh, what we call regalia, which is the traditional outfits that we use for dancing. Jay played a CD with some uh, drum music, and he began to hop in time to the music. He had trouble getting the hoops in the air so that in a way that he could catch them. Gizmo had stretched out his front paws and scratched at the floor. That was his way of dancing. When they were finished their dance, Jay and Gizmo had a rest. They were happy. Mom and Dad were very pleased that Jay had learned something about autism. They were especially proud that Jay had shown a lot of interest learning about his culture. So one thing that is uh, very special in our communities as First Nations people is uh, learning about our culture because of, uh, especially in more recent times, our culture is uh, something that a lot of the youth don't really pursue because of, um, in a modern age, our culture uh, can be seen in a lot of ways that uh, aren't necessarily normal. So um, we are always very happy when our youth actually reach out and uh, want to learn about our culture because of um, there's a lot of history there along with uh, not only just our traditions, but there's a lot of history about our people and how we got where we, go, um, uh, where we are now. So at the end of the book, there is a quote called, that says, uh, stars and moonbeams and boundless dreams. That is what boys are made of. And that is a, a quote made by uh, Dr. James Brown. 